So, you want to be an engineer one day, or maybe your parents want you to be an engineer one day. Regardless, I think it's a great idea. But when you're overseas, I know that sifting through all of the information out there can be quite a challenge. There are so many great places that you can choose from, so today I'm going to be breaking down some of the best engineering schools in Canada for international students. So, this is going to be a multiple part series where I'm going to be covering some of the following topics. I'll get into what grades and requirements you need in order to be able to attend one of these schools, I'll tell you about a bunch of other things such as the cost, location, quality of the program, and at the very end I'll get into scholarships that can help you actually attend these schools because, spoiler alert, they're really expensive. In today's video I'm going to be introducing each school and their engineering programs along with their co-op and internship programs and telling you some of the pros and cons of each and what I think about each school. If you've decided that you want to study in Canada, your first question is probably which schools are the best? Well, that's a very valid question and I'm going to do my best to answer it. I'm going to be using the McLean's Canada 2020 Top Engineering School rankings, which look a little something like this. So tied for first, we have the University of Toronto and the University of Waterloo. In third, we have the University of British Columbia. In fourth, we have McGill University. In fifth, we have the University of Alberta. In sixth, we have McMaster University. And seventh, Queens. And Queens really jumped the rankings. If you look in the far column, you'll see that they jumped up from 11th place last year, so they're doing pretty good. So here's a second chart showing some of the ways that these rankings are broken down. I'm not really sure how they measure these things because they don't really tell you on the website. Maybe they take a survey from a bunch of students and see which university is most popular. But because they don't really tell you how they do it, I wouldn't take these rankings too, too seriously. Seriously, but they are a good guideline. I also personally think that rankings are not the most important thing that you should be considering when you're looking to choose a university. I made a video talking about which guidelines I use to help myself choose the university that I'm currently studying at, which is McMaster. So feel free to check out that video after you've watched this one, and while you're at it, why not leave a like and subscribe to the channel? It would really help me out, and I really appreciate it. Now, I know that most people are just going to try for the top schools regardless of what I have to say, and I can respect that position because a lot of the times the top schools are a pretty decent choice. Also, a lot of the top schools on this list are top 100 universities across the entire world, so you really can't go wrong going to one of these schools in Canada. So just to help you get familiar with some of the common names of the top seven universities that I'm gonna be covering, let's just break them down really quickly. So we have University of Waterloo, which is just called Waterloo. We have University of Toronto, which is commonly called U of T. We have University of British Columbia, which is UBC. And then you have McGill, Alberta, Mac, and Queens. So if you're ever watching anybody talk about Canadian universities, now you know the common names and you can understand what they're saying. Next, in this section, I'm going to be talking about all of the different engineering programs and the claims that they make on their websites. And I'll tell you my experience with whether or not these claims are true and what I've read and heard online. Hopefully, this will give you an idea about the quality of the education or the internships that you might be doing. So let's start off with the University of Waterloo. They have arguably the best engineering program in all of Canada, which makes them the most competitive engineering program in all of Canada. And the reason for this is because of their co-op or internship program. The way that their program is set up is you start off by taking school for either four months or eight months, which they call stream four or stream eight. Then at the end of your chosen stream, you begin a co-op. And this is probably where Waterloo stands out the most. The people at their co-op offices are extremely well connected and they are extremely helpful in getting you a job for your internships. Waterloo has almost a 100% participation rate in all of their co-op programs, meaning that literally every single student, including the first years, gets an internship every single work term. And after your first work term, you usually go back to school for four months, and then work for four months, and then go to school for four months, so you're just switching back and forth between work and school after stream four or stream eight. One reason that this is such a big deal is because these work terms can help you pay off your degree while you're in school. Another big reason is that the work is practical experience and you're not just gonna be flipping burgers at McDonald's. I know I sound like a salesperson here for Waterloo, but they do have quite a bit going for them. However, all of the nice stuff being said, there is a place where Waterloo doesn't shine very well. Waterloo is a notoriously depressed school, and I'm sure you can say this for a lot of universities across Canada, but Waterloo has it pretty bad. It's tough to say before going to a university like Waterloo if while you're there you might feel some symptoms of depression, but if you're going and you're solely considering the program, then Waterloo is a very good choice. And next we're going to move on to U of T. 
U of T's biggest pro is that it's located right in the heart of Toronto and there are tons of bars, restaurants, and businesses that you can go to and explore. You're also surrounded by some of the biggest corporations in Canada who often like to hire U of T students. So if you really want to get a taste of living in a big city, then U of T could be a really good choice. Their engineering program is also really good as we can see from the rankings earlier, but I've also heard some rumors that U of T programs are the most difficult in the university. I'm not quite sure why that is, maybe the professors suck, maybe the students are taken off guard when they first start university and they don't realize how difficult it will be, but that's the rumor and I would obviously take this with a grain of salt because no matter where you go to an engineering school, it's gonna be difficult and U of T is no exception. Some other fun facts about U of T, it has nine libraries, there are tons of places in residence for first years, and generally speaking it's a very well-rounded institution that does research in lots of areas. Now U of T does have some type of a co-op program but it differs a little bit from Waterloo because at U of T you either take a 12-month or a 16-month co-op and you have to do it after your second or third year. But in your first two summers where you're not working, that doesn't mean that you can't still look for a related job and try and get a job in an engineering field. But those jobs that you get most likely will not be counted as co-op on your engineering degree. This difference is usually where the argument is made in favor of Waterloo. Waterloo's co-op program lets you experiment with multiple different companies by giving you five or six different work terms. Meanwhile, at U of T, you have to get hired by one company and you have to stick with that company for 12 or 16 months, whether or not you're actually enjoying the work that you're doing. But that being said, I don't think it's the entire picture when it comes to co-ops. Regardless of how your particular school sets up their co-op program, you are gonna have to find the jobs yourself and apply yourself and everything is going to be on you. Sure, you might get a little more help here and there, or you might have some more connected advisors, but ultimately it's up to you what you want to do with your degree, and you have ultimate control over your university experience. I just thought that it was important to put that out there, because regardless of restrictions, you can really do what you want. Lastly, here are some final downsides for U of T. So what are some problems? First off, it's expensive. U of T is going to be the most expensive university in the most expensive city, so your cost of living is going to be pretty high. And secondly, if you don't like living in a big city and you want to see some nice scenery, Canada has lots of very scenic places that in my opinion are much more beautiful than the unfortunate concrete jungle of Toronto. And third on the list of schools we have UBC. Their co-op program is a little bit of a mix between U of T and Waterloo. At UBC you have to apply to the co-op program in either your second or third year as you can see on the website here and some other requirements is that you must be full-time and you have to achieve a minimum cumulative average of at least 65%. In addition, you need strong written and verbal skills, co-op motivation, willingness to relocate, commit to a broad range of related positions, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so you get the idea. It's a little bit more restrictive than the other co-op programs from the other universities. And if you're accepted into this program, you're going to have to participate in some mandatory co-op workshops beginning in late October. This isn't such a bad thing because honestly, a lot of students could use some help fixing their resumes and cover letters, myself included. The only part that kind of bothers me is why isn't this offered to all UBC students regardless of their ability to meet the requirements? Wouldn't you want every student from your school to be a good employee and to have the same opportunities as the other people in the school? But maybe I'm just biased, I don't know. Regardless, if you do get into UBC co-op, their co-op office will probably help you out a little bit more than U of T, but a little bit less than Waterloo. And some pros about going to UBC is that their campus is absolutely stunning, and generally speaking, British Columbia is a beautiful province and a great place to explore. So if you like scenery, UBC is a great place to go. Their Vancouver campus is a short distance from downtown. So depending on how willing you are to take transportation, you can go down there and explore a little bit and see all of the sites that there are to see. Some other pros that UBC really likes to brag about is how diverse of a school they are. In my experience, most engineering schools in Canada are extremely diverse and you get tons of people from all different parts of the world. And one of the most important points so far, I think, is that UBC is the cheapest of the first three that I mentioned. And we'll get into cost in the next part. Next up we have McGill. They're located in the city of Montreal in the province of Quebec and they're right in the middle of the city. 
very similar to U of T. Now, the thing about Quebec is that it's probably the coldest province on this list. And I'm sure that if you're coming to Canada, you're well aware of how cold it will be, but when it's cold in Quebec, it's extremely cold. That place is freezing. Now, one place where McGill really fails, and the part that I think is the most important to an engineering degree, is their co-op program. They only offer co-ops to mining and materials engineers, which is about 10% of the engineering programs that they offer at the school. But if you do have happen to be in one of those two engineering programs, you can do either 4, 8, 12, or 16 months of a work term. By the end of the degree, you should have at least 12 months of work experience, and you can get the co-op designation on your degree. But based on this alone, it's hard for me to recommend McGill for all the other kinds of engineering, because every other school on this list has some type of support for their students when it comes to getting a co-op or an internship. But on the other hand, McGill has some pretty high admission averages, which means that a lot of smart students do end up going to that school, and I'm sure that they end up doing very well. Another thing to consider that isn't really a pro or con is that the further you go away from Montreal, the less and less that people start to speak English, and everybody starts to speak French. So if you want to do any tourism around Montreal, you're probably going to have to pick up on just a little bit of French to get by. Overall, I haven't really heard too much about McGill because they're located in a different province, so I don't really know what's going on over there. And number five, we have University of Alberta. This university is located next to the city of Edmonton in the province of Alberta, and the cost of living there will generally be a little bit higher than a place like Ontario. Some other fun facts, Edmonton has a hockey team just like Toronto, and they also have the biggest mall in Canada. Not sure why that matters, but there you go. The location is pretty good, and you can get to Edmonton just by walking or by taking a short bus ride. And one of the things that I really like about Alberta is their co-op program. If you choose to participate in the University of Alberta's co-op program, they expect you to do five four-month work terms with satisfactory performance and term paper evaluations, which basically just means you did a good job. So this means that they expect you to work a full 20 months before graduating. The way that the University of Alberta sets up their program is very similar to Waterloo and they are also very well connected with their co-op advisors and they know tons of companies so they will probably be very helpful in getting you a job. You don't have much flexibility and you can't do 8 or 12 months but you are alternating between work and study which some people really like. Otherwise I've only heard good things about the University of Alberta so definitely go do some of your own research if you want to find out more. And sixth we have McMaster University which is where I'm going to school right now. Personally I do like the McMaster campus campus. It's located in Hamilton, which is about a 45 minute car ride from Toronto. But there isn't really that much that you can do at the university. And usually if you want to go out and have some fun or go to a bar or something, you have to take a 10, 15, even 20 minute bus ride to get to downtown. However, their scenery is very nice and they're located right next to some very natural wildlife and the botanical gardens, which are also very cool to check out. The way that McMaster has structured their co-op is the same thing as McGill, except they offer it for all of their engineering programs. And essentially you can take either four months, 8 months, 12 months, or 16 month work terms, or a combination of all of them. So the options are super customizable, and that was part of the reason that I chose McMaster, was I really liked the ability to customize however I wanted. But some of you might not like this unstructured format very much, because it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to work, and that can cause some people, kind of happened to me in my first two years, to be unmotivated, and to not apply to as many jobs as they possibly can. But outside of that, I can say that about half of the professors are really good and half of them completely suck, and I'm sure that you'll find this across all of the universities. You're always gonna get a bad professor and it's kind of just up to you to take care of your own education. But I do like McMaster's facilities and the variety of programs that they offer, and I've had a lot of fun there. And my last comment is that if you don't really like scenery very much and you really want to be near a big city, then maybe don't go to McMaster. It is kind of in the middle of nowhere. And last but not least, we have Queen's Engineering, which naturally structures their things after U of T. U of T and Queen's are very similar, just located in two very different places. Um, in this case, they offer you a 12 or 16 month co-op after your second or third year, identical to U of T. And if you want to go to a party school, then Queen's is definitely a good place to go. I've heard that they like to have lots of parties. But it's also kind of in the middle of nowhere, which I think is part of the reason why they party so much. They are one of the top universities in the countries, and from what I've heard, they do a really good job administering their engineering courses. So that about wraps it up for internships and other comments about the schools. Next, let's get into cost. Thank you so much for watching the first part of this video series. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see the next parts where I'll be talking about cost, grades, and admission requirements, as well as some scholarships that can help you get into school in Canada. If you like the video, be sure to leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one.